Look around a hockey rink or a ski mountain and one thing that you can notice a lack of is diversity. Historically, winter sports have seen a racial gap in those who participate. Connecting Point's Amanda Levinson reports on what factors cause this ethnic composition of participants and those who are actively trying to bridge the divide. I actually played ice hockey in an urban area. Uh, I grew up playing in Atlantic City and it was interesting. Everyone on my team was white, but Atlantic City itself is majority black. During his time as an undergraduate at Amherst College, Stephen Mallory played on the school's ice hockey team. Since he first skated onto the ice at age five, Mallory said he noticed a low presence of minority players in the sport. Typically, I would be the only black person on the team. I noticed uh, the farther I went with hockey, the more diverse it became, especially here. Uh, like, this is one of the most diverse teams I've been on. In ice hockey, there is a stereotype of what players look like under their gear. I remember when I was in kindergarten, I told my friend I, I play hockey, and he's like, hockey, that's a white man's game. And he's like a, he was black, and he's like a five-year-old, and even he knew. According to the NCAA, African-American players made up only 0.8% of male ice hockey student athletes in 2018. Compared to basketball, and you, you see like a bunch of people who like look like you, why not? You see, watch, a, watch an ice hockey game, and you don't really see people who look like you, and you kind of wonder why. Other winter sports are also known for having mostly white participants. Skiing and snowboarding see a racial gap in those who hit the slopes. According to the National Ski Areas Association, 84.8% of ski area visitors were white as of 2017. It's a stereotype because I think it's been true. But I don't think it's been true because of any exclusiveness. Again, I think it's just the nature of the people that play them and where they're from. And as we mix more and become a more global society, uh, I think that changes. The gap in those involved with winter sports can be attributed to the high cost, geography, and access, and the amount of exposure people receive to these sports. You have to have money to ski. You have to be able to afford travel and ski passes and equipment. It's too bad that it's so expensive to ski, but you know, you need the equipment, you know, like it's the same thing with hockey. Ice hockey is definitely a, one of the most expensive sports there you could possibly play. You, you have to spend thousands of dollars a year. Aside from paying for these sports, people need a place to practice. A lot of ski areas are in fairly rural areas that are predominantly white. And so um, there's not tons of ski areas really close to more urban areas. And so there's a travel that's required to ski in many places. And I think that that obviously has been a barrier. It's not something that you can just step out your back door and do as opposed to other sports. And I think that um, you know, has affected historically how many people participated in the sport. These activities also tend to be family traditions. Many people get introduced to winter sports by their family members at a young age. Its origins are in Northern Europe, so coming from areas that are white, and so we see that coming from generation to generation. So families that are skiers teach their kids to ski and it becomes a family activity. They get passed down. Skiers are generally from skiing families. Hockey players are generally from hockey families. You do what your parents do. You know, your parents is what guides you in life, you know? And a lot of kids that are here, mostly their parents are doing it. I've never skied. I've actually never done it. But I want to make sure my kids do it, so that's why I'm here. These factors create barriers that prevent people of different socioeconomic and ethnic backgrounds from partaking in winter sports. As the United States population continues to grow more diverse, the industries surrounding winter sports have begun to address the racial gap by appealing to new audiences. Overall in the industry, you know, we're really cognizant that uh, baby boomers are getting older. And um, if you look at the U.S. population and where the growing younger populations are, it's in a lot of those minority um, demographics. And so, you know, we're advertising on Spanish speaking stations. We're advertising in Chinese newspapers. And we know that the future of the sport needs to be inclusive. It needs to have uh, lots of people participating. Mallory said he never let the racial gap discourage him from playing hockey and that others interested in winter sports shouldn't either. To the people who pin those stereotypes on sports, I, I'd have to say you're wrong. I mean, anyone can do what they want to do. Uh, it doesn't really matter what 
your skin color is, uh, doesn't matter what other people think, you have to like step out and do what you want to do if you want to be happy.